If you are looking into buying cheap and safe FIFA coins, look no further than footcoinshop.net. They have the fastest service, an incredible loyalty reward system, and the best prices around. Use my creator code INCEPTION when you sign up for your account and get a 5% discount with your order. Hey guys, what's going on? Inception here and welcome to another video. Guys, today's video is going to be a finishing tutorial uh, for those of you starting off in EAFC and are having trouble with uh, the goal scoring in general, right? So we're going to be showing some different examples of the types of shots that you're going to want to take when getting into certain scenarios on the pitch, okay? So the first one here is going to be the power strike. This is the one that we're going to have the most examples of for the in-game stuff because uh, it is going to be the most consistent way of scoring for the most part, right? So power shot is just like this. You take a shot regularly uh, while shooting the opportunity. Now, I want you guys to notice something with the power shots, okay? You guys just saw an example there. We're going to be showing these examples for two, for one of the regular power shots and for that specifically. You just noticed right there my player doing a side-footed shot. Now, I think that EA needs to do a patch in the future that takes that out completely because when you do a power strike, it should always be laced, right? But as of right now, that shot animation can sometimes happen. And that one is not an ideal one to have in certain scenarios. Like if I'm, you know, taking that shot, but I'm actually doing like a finesse shot or something, which in his case, he still does like an outside foot shot, then that would be okay. But for that animation to pop off, a lace shot is going to be better for precision and accuracy than that shot because that shot's more for precision, not necessarily for like the power and stuff. So you have to be very, very careful of that one, right? But like I said, when you do the power strike, it'll normally look like that, but that side footed shot could happen. And I'll show you guys some examples, okay? Okay, guys, so I'm going to be showing you some examples of the power strike. This is the one we're going to have the most highlights for because, like I said, it's going to be the most consistent way of scoring for the most part as of right now in the game, okay? So uh, a couple of opportunities that you'll notice when you want to hit the power strike is when you get into scenarios like this, right? So situation like this, you see me slow down, waiting for attacking AI to activate for me. Obviously, you can use like the player lock system, which, which is the L1, R1 to click to a player to make that run a little bit quicker. But a lot of the players that have really good attacking AI will still occupy the space very quickly, right? So with Holland at the top, you can see that he starts to make an angled run downwards. In a situation like this, your two options is gonna be either a power strike or it's going to be an outside foot shot because once he's on his left foot here, you can go for either or and it'll be a consistent way of scoring. Now, in this situation here, we do end up going for the power strike and it does end up working well for us. A Trivella, which is the outside foot shot, would be ideal there too because you're actually curving the ball away from the goalkeeper too, okay? Another example here, let's take a look. Okay, so... So that's me occupying a uh, space down the middle. I do a skill move to kind of gain that momentum. Here's the thing about this shot specifically. This shot is actually pretty effective if you hit it with really good players, right? So um, I get into a 45 degree angle here with Kevin De Bruyne. And again, we can hit a power strike and he, he scores the opportunity. But there are situations, like I mentioned, where the side foot shot could come off, which I'll show examples of as well, okay? Okay, so now we're in a situation over here. Um, you know, opening up the space, doing some skill moves, get the ball here at James Madison, do a body feint. We've now created a 45 degree angle again. Power strike, he scores the opportunity for us as well. Uh, this one here, we have another opportunity where we're showing another 45 degree angle. So Gakpo gets into a situation here. Good touch, good accelerated touch afterwards, 45 degree angle as well. Power strike works out too because the goalie starts to push to the side area because he's noticing your player's movement. So it gives you the opportunity to shoot uh, into that side position. Uh, this one here. Again, this is a bunch of attacking AI stuff, right? So this is where attacking AI, we'll be talking about this in like an attacking tutorial in the future. But James Madison's a very good example is because in the cam position, this guy actually knows how to move. Um, like I mentioned to you guys in the player of the month, De Bruyne review, I was even mentioning it, all that stuff. So situation here, you could already see some attacking AI runs being made. You can see that he has three defenders. So it's a perfect scenario for us for kind of for us to kind of just take that small little drag touch upwards, make the pass downwards and make sure that I take a touch that's not completely straight, but it's downwards to create an angle where I can either shoot to the far post or to the near post. Now, generally speaking, in this situation here, we do end up going to the near post. But I'm going to be honest with you guys. If there is no defender facing upwards from you, then it would be ideal to just take the shot upwards because at a 45 shooting it across, 
it would be a really good strike to work with. The reason why I don't go for the strike as it is happening is because obviously nobody's perfect, right? But as the moment is happening, my concern is if he controls this defender too quickly and he'll block that area too quickly for me to take that shot across. So I take the touch to avoid the defender that's next to me, right? And I'm I'm looking at that as I'm, I'm attacking in this area here, right? So I already see that angled run. I'm taking the touch based off of where I see the defender, right? If I do a right-sided angle, it's not really going to work out because the defender could go go onto the player really quickly if switch quick enough, right? So again, in the moment, it just makes the most sense for me to go to the near post in that scenario. Uh, this one here, quick little pass, quick little pass. We go for the near post there. So that's a really good example as well, right? Where we get into an angle where we take a drag touch. If I go for a shot across, again, it could work because in this year's game, these players don't have like the craziest play styles or defensive animations just yet. Some of them will at some points for sure. Uh, with the higher rated ones, like if you're up against like Saliba and Varane, like they could block out these opportunities. But again, my main concern here is thinking about how I don't, I haven't created the angle yet to shoot it across because I'm thinking about the defenders potentially blocking the opportunity, right? Habit of last year's game um, for the most part, right? But in a situation like this, you can see that I'm focused on where I personally believe the defender is going to be dragged to, right? So I think that when he selects this guy, he's going to be dragged upwards, which is what you could see here. Once he selects him, he goes for this, the, the, the tackle right away because he thinks I'm going to shoot right away, which we don't. We create the near post angle. You always want to shoot the ball at a power around here right that angle right here a, a two and a half bars three bars is going to be the most ideal that's where you get the real venom behind the strike okay yeah so as i said guys the power strike one is the one i'm going to show the most opportunities for because that's the most consistent way of scoring right so it's good to show all these different examples so this one is the accidental side footed strike that you take when you're doing a regular power strike this will still sometimes happen sometimes you'll still score so it's not a big deal but there's certain situations where if they actually did a lace shot they would have scored the opportunity right so i'll show you guys a couple of examples here where we get possession of the ball McAllister, again i do a bad decision here right but if you take a look at my commands for the specific strike at no point do i hold the r1 right so in that situation there he's actually doing a precision strike by doing that now again this is a bad shot uh choice in this situation in general in my case because i should be taking the touch here and once i got that 45 that's an easy goal across a goal from a finesse shot or from an outside foot shot especially if i have the traits on the cards or the play styles on the cards right uh so that's a bad choice on my part but an example of the animation popping off when i don't want it to right uh gonna be another situation here where we get the ball and you could see that because de bruyne is trying to catch his feet he does a side footed strike so the animations that the player does you can sometimes see it anyways especially if he's trying to collect himself but again if it's a power strike could be going to the back of the net this one's a little bit more obvious that he does that sort of strike so that's not as big of a deal right uh if i miss an opportunity like that like i should probably let him settle the ball a little bit more now it's these areas here where it's a little bit shaky so i take a touch i take a a shot cancel and again i'm shooting it across goal so if this is a lace shot and his defensive player doesn't have the play style to do a crazy block because you have to look at the play styles that the defenders have if i'm doing a lace shot here this is a goal especially at a 45 degree angle the distance between me and the goalkeeper is good a lace shot which would be a goal in the situation because this car doesn't have the play style to block this area but my martial does a side footed shot which is a precision shot more than it is a power strike and we don't score that opportunity, right? So in a situation like that, that's where it's like, oh, maybe I should have done like a near post goal scoring opportunity because especially once I take that, uh, that fake shot, I've created a situation for myself where going for a near post wouldn't necessarily be a bad option, right? But I don't make the wrong choice here of going across either because at a 45 facing across, it would be a goal if he laced it, which he doesn't, right? So you have to be very mindful of whether or not your players could potentially do it. Um, we do a through ball pass here. I get the angle here. And again, Martial does a side footed shot to the near post angle, right? Side footed shot worked out well for us, but uh, again, could be a little shaky of a situation. Uh, another situation here, we get the ball. Again, that one, he does, that one, I, I'm not going to count. I'm going to skip past that one because that's like a different type of animation in general. Um, I think this one might be a good one here. 
that's the same animation as the Martial one, right? So that animation is actually not as bad. When they do that one, I don't mind it as much, right? But it's that other side-footed one that you just have to be very mindful of when you're doing the power strike. Like, it still could come off, right? So it's a very, very annoying one. And it's good that we had the example in the beginning of the video to really show it, right? Okay, guys. So the next shooting animation that we're going to have here is going to be the Trivella or the outside foot shot, okay? So the way to execute this one is you get at a 45 degree angle, you hold L trigger or L2, and you take the strike, right? You can hit it from close, you can hit it from far as well. Any of those opportunities would work um, for those types of uh, shooting animations. Okay, guys, so let's show some examples of the outside foot shot working for us, right? So just be mindful of this, that you can also hit an outside foot shot animation by doing a finesse shot, which is holding the R1 button, which we'll be showing an example of. You have to like really feel it out with the player in game when it comes to like those 45 degree angle touches, whether or not he'll actually hit it. You know, like you're going to really feel it out if you uh, get used to the command itself, right? But this is a situation here uh, to kind of demonstrate an outside foot shot. We make the pass here with Kirby. Kirby is super explosive to make that angled run into the middle. And we're already at a 45 degree angle. So all I have to do is hold L trigger in this situation, shoot the opportunity, and she'll have the outside foot shot to curve it around the goalkeeper. Okay, so it wouldn't make sense to do a power strike in that area because if you do a power strike, your shot is being made on the inside. So because it's being made on the inside, the goalie is going to easily save it. Or he could. You could still probably score, but an outside foot shot is just the most ideal situation there. Uh, this is an area here to show you guys an example of you hitting a finesse shot. But if your player has traits or play styles, I always say traits, but play, traits and play styles are the same thing. If they have the play style to contextually hit a Trivella, if you get into a situation here, you can see that I'm clearly, I'm clearly holding R1, but my Madison will still go for the outside foot shot in that area. So be very mindful of that. If you want to do a finesse shot with your weak foot, but you have that play style, your player will still, will still sometimes hit the outside foot shot but it's still very effective 45 degree angle especially if he doesn't use the uh, the manual goalkeeping which <laughs> should be deleted from the game but you score your opportunity that way right uh this is a long distance one if you have really good players that have finesse shot plus finesse shot plus is crazy right but if you have finesse shot or finesse shot plus uh, especially someone like Hyung Min Sun on that left hand side hitting those finesse shots would be kind of crazy but regardless um in this area here outside foot shots Nice little Trivella. All you have to do, little three bar power or power for the most part, like three bars is usually okay. And uh, you'll score an opportunity like that, right? If you hit a regular strike, it's more based off of the middle. If you green time it, it's more based to the side in regards to consistency. But obviously be very mindful of how your player is going into the shot, if he's collective or not, all that kind of stuff. Uh, another area here uh, to showcase the outside foot shot so a couple skill moves here with Ronaldinho accelerating into play ball roll creates a really good situation for us to be able to hit an outside foot shot that's the one thing about the ball roll that's really nice right so if he over commits his defender like he did there from the tackle because he thinks I'm going to shoot the ball right away once I get that ball roll angle I could create an outside foot shot and score this opportunity which is what I should have done with my uh, other player in the last game right um, and then this is a situation here with Roberto Carlos getting just outside the 18 yard box, hitting three bars of power, and he obviously still hits the outside foot shot as well. Uh, this is a situation here with Erling Holland, similar area, right? We do a couple of dribbles to kind of fake out Virgil van Dijk, L trigger, he does the outside foot shot animation and scores the opportunity, right? So, very, very effective way of scoring goals, too. So, this one, guys, the explanation doesn't need to be long, it's just the extra pass meta, okay? Always be mindful of the attacking AI of your players because there's going to be a lot of different situations where doing the extra pass just makes more sense for you to score your opportunities, right? So for these ones, we'll actually be showing the full highlight, the showcase, always watching out for your attacking AI for the extra pass meta. So this is just, this is just passing, right? This is just you attacking normally. We create a situation here. Could I technically go for an outside foot shot there with Holland? Absolutely, but I'm always looking for the extra pass, right? And this works out really well, especially if you have like the direct passing tactic, especially for the next version of the game, uh, because uh, it's just the meta of how it kind of works, right? So situation right there, I create some attacking space with one of my players down the middle. And then obviously I have, um, I think it was Messi there for the extra shot animation madison again could i technically go for an outside foot shot i could but i'm always looking at that extra pass to make sure that i can have an easy goal scoring opportunity
Okay, guys, so for the next one we have is going to be the regular finesse shot. So the regular finesse shot is actually an effective way of scoring uh, in this game, especially if you have the playstyle or the playstyle plus. The playstyle pu uh, plus for the finesse shot is insane. But if you have players that just have the regular finesse shot and their shooting capability is really good, they take insane animations, okay? So you can just go inside the 18-yard box, hold the R1, and shoot the opportunity. It is an actual effective way of scoring in this game nowadays at a 45 degree angle when you're close to the goalkeeper. You can hit it either from a regular finesse where you do power or you could do like a tap shot as well, right? But with the tap shot, you have to be closer, which is gonna be another shooting animation I'm gonna show you guys, okay? Okay, guys, so let's show some examples of us hitting the finesse shots in game. So a lot of the times, again, guys, you're gonna get into 45 degree angles. When you get into the 45 degree angle, the reason why the finesse shot is such a consistent way of scoring in situations like this is because you are curving the ball away from the goalkeeper, right? So it creates an opportunity for yourself to score more of those chances. Obviously, if I hit a power strike here, it could work as well, but a power strike is more straight in a situation like this against the goalie. So you won't have that angle to really hit it across. Again, sometimes when you hit a power strike, they could still do that side-footed shot. That side-footed shot animation would actually be helpful in that scenario right there because precision is a little bit more helpful than it is power, but a finesse shot at a 45 still works out well there. Um, Again, another situation here. We got inside the 18 yard box. I've created the finesse shot opportunity. This is the same opportunity as before, where if your player has the play style uh, of the, triviel, the uh, Trivella, if you go for the finesse shot, sometimes they'll still, they'll still do the Trivella animation from you doing the finesse shot animation. Um, another one here, let's take a look, right? So with Ronaldinho, we create a play. We hold the L1, R1 to let the ball go through his legs. We get that nice little acceleration. We approach the ball at a 45 degree angle again. This is Ronaldinho, so this card's insane. So he doesn't feel this defensive pressure or anything like that, right? So this card, I can hit a finesse shot from this angle here. And I mean, take a look at all this stuff, right? And he still hits the ball as cleanly as he does. But again, 45 degree angle, you hit a really good strike. Um, this one here is the animation I'm talking about when you have the traits, right? Or the play style. So I do a ball roll. Best way to get a finesse shot that's more consistent is to do the ball roll first and then the finesse shot afterwards to create that 45 degree angle. But take a look at the finesse shot animation on this one. So again, similar to last year's game for the reviews, when they do the bend of the body like that, when that pops off, it's so crazy when they hit them, right? So again, with Ronaldinho, ball roll, does that bend of the body animation, scores the opportunity. Again, with the play styles, it makes a really big difference. That's why I'm telling you guys, if you use Hyungman's son in that area, he's gonna be insane. Situation again here with Ronaldinho, finesse shot, boom, does the bend of the body animation. Look at that finesse shot without having to green time the opportunity. Again, I'm showing you an example with Ronaldinho, but do the same thing with Hyung Min Sun. He's going to be able to do those finesse shots as well, especially when you have the play style. Um, situation here again, I think I do like a, a ball roll or I do a skill move and then I do a couple of left stick touches. And again, you have to create the space Right? I'm not shooting the ball over here right away. If I shoot the ball like this with his left foot across goal, I'm, it's not going to work out. But because I've created the angle where I'm facing downwards, upwards, I can go for a finesse shot and try to curl this around the goalkeeper. Right, And I'll score that opportunity. Uh, finesse shot here. So this is an example of one that doesn't work. Okay, And you have to be very mindful of this when you are facing the goal in a certain way. Because the power... That your players do it's a little bit inconsistent in certain areas so you'll see here that as i'm attacking right i create some space for myself and then boom you would think oh i already have the angle to be able to shoot this opportunity at a finesse shot and it should work right but when you're in this area i want to show you guys something this is very important to mention you see this line inside of the 18 yard box this line over here is where the shots are the most inconsistent right sometimes you'll get some good power strikes from certain angles when you take the strikes but you can see that I'm still coming off of an emphasis here with Thierry Henry. So going for finesse shots from this distance to this distance against the goalkeeper, it's not going to work out all the time unless I green time it. But even if I green time it, because Thierry Henry is coming off of the dribble a certain way, like you guys can see here, there's a transition there that's going to make his shot not as crazy to work with. So in a situation like that, I probably should have been able to take the touch take another touch out of 45 and then go for like a near post or something, right? Because I need a power strike here more than I need a finesse shot from that distance. Um, this one here, 
This is a very good example of utilizing the finesse shot as well. So if you have someone like Thierry Henry, who's an R trigger merchant, someone who's really fast, right? And you get ahead of the defender, situation like this, I think that's Varane. If I'm ahead of the defender here and I don't want the defender to get in front of me, I do a double ball roll, right? And a similar situation like before, how I was facing bottom up, I've already created the finesse shot opportunity for myself and I could just hit it and he'll score the opportunity. But that ball roll is what creates that physical presence that allows you to score that opportunity because Varane can't get the ball off you afterwards. So the next one here, guys, is just going to be like the chip shot animation. I don't have in-game examples of this because to be honest with you guys, I don't often hit the, the chip shots because I prefer to go for the more consistent ways of scoring. But when you hit a chip shot, it does feel good when it goes into the back of the net. So again, chip shots can be a play style thing as well. So if you have the play style of chip shot, they'll take really good strikes because the loop on the strike comes off really nicely. Now, it's very hard to show this in the skill games because the goalies don't react the same way. But when a player is pushing off against you and you're close to them, if you time it against the goalkeeper really well, they will force an animation to create a good chip shot opportunity for you. Chip shots, I feel like there's not a, a lot of situation where I would personally go for the chip shot over some of the other options, right? But obviously, if you're really close to the goalkeeper and in the moment you can't think of a specific skill move to utilize to get past him, then a chip shot's going to be your last bet because you're close to the goalkeeper and maybe he forces an animation where you can score the opportunity. But it's not one that I personally use a lot, but it, it does work out really well in this game. So for the actual commands for the chip shot, guys, it's just you holding L1 and then going for a shot, right? So if you could time it nicely, if you can notice that the guy's pushing the goalie against you quickly and you want to go for it, it still works out. Like I've still scored chip shots in last year's game too, but even if you guys watch the reviews for last year, I would always go for the... Um, the the other stuff more than the chip shots personally but again if when they come off they're really nice so this next one guys is going to be the tap shots now the tap shot is an effective way of scoring in this game especially when you get close to the goalkeeper who doesn't have like i don't know if it, it exists in this year's game or like a saves with feet traits but sometimes even when they don't have the traits you could still potentially miss the opportunity so make sure that you're using it in the right situations right but a tap shot is basically you getting close to the goalkeeper like this and then just going for a tap shot right you're not uh going for too much power uh it's just basically a more driven way of hitting a strike right it works the same way for the power strikes and it also works the same way for the finesse shot which you guys will see me utilize from time to time so when you get close to the goalkeeper like that even if you're in a situation like this where let's say for instance you create a 45 degree angle and but you have to be like really close to the goalkeeper like you do this and you do a tap shot they could score the opportunities but a lot of times doing a power strike is usually the most ideal situation but a tap shot is an effective way of scoring i'll show you guys some examples okay so very key thing to understand when it comes down to the t the tap shot guys is that you're going to notice a lot of the times that i do a first time touch a certain way for me to take the tap shot afterwards okay so this is an example here where we're attacking in the side position we do a fake shot into a croquetta open up the space down the middle i get the touch and then i go for the tap shot one because the goalkeeper gets too close to me two because i'm being mindful of the fact that maybe he switches to this top guy over here in the defensive position this guy right here and i can't take the shot across goal so once i take the touch i'm trying to create that angle to go against the goalkeeper because if the goalie rushes up against me he's going to be based off of the middle and i can just do one little tap shot less power you can see that there's no there's no like thing at the bottom left you can't even see it when i'm taking the strike watch get into this area here look at this look at us look at look at it. below one bar because i really want it to be laid on the floor for this goal right um another situation here extra pass extra pass Again, I'm kind of close to the goalkeeper here. Could I technically go for like an outside foot shot if I have the play style, I'll go for the near post opportunity? Sure. If the card is a left-footed player, could I technically go for a power strike across goal as well? I could do that as well. But because I'm using McAllister in this situation, I go for the finesse shot, tap shot, and it works out perfectly fine for us, right? Because we've taken that first touch. That's the key thing to mention here. Because when you take the touch, you are acting against the goalkeeper, right? So look, I take a touch act against the goalkeeper he look at where he's positioned when i'm taking this touch right he stops there but he doesn't go upwards right that's where he stops he's stopping where i'm taking the initial touch so it creates that space for me to hit to the to the, to the left side right a uh, couple situations here as well this is an example of a tap shot 
being the best option, but I put too much power behind it, right? As I was playing with De Bruyne, I, I just put way too much power. You're going to notice it, right? So I get into this scenario here. Look at how much power I put on the shot. I put just too much, just too much, which creates a situation where if the goalie gets too close to me, I'm not going to have that tap shot animation to go underneath him, right? Because he's getting close to me. When he's closer, you want you want your power to be less. When he's farther, you want your power to be more. That's just how it works. So because I put too much power, I go for the finesse shot, I don't score the opportunity. But if I put less power, I probably would have scored because of the way that he would have approached me uh, to try to make the save. Uh, another situation here where this is, I have to show you guys this whole play because this is just a good attacking play in general, right? Uh, beautiful football being played here. Through ball pass, ball roll. I do an L1 flick downwards with Messi, fake shot to face the direction of the goal to create the passing, the passing angles. Again, very key thing to mention. You do the one touch first, right? If I take a strike here right away, it could be inconsistent. But because I'm doing this, he's going to be stuck in that area first. And then I do the tap shot and I could score the opportunity because I have to do that touch first. This is a situation here where the tap shot is not an ideal area to do it, okay? I'm facing at a 45 degree angle. I've done a, a skill move here with Hyungmin Sun. I do a fake shot. I go into a heel to heel. I should be shooting this ball normally. Power strike across goal. But because it's 3 0, it's 85th minute. I'm trying out some different things to see if it works. It's important to always test out these things, right? But I do a tap shot here, and the goalie does a leg save. So always be mindful of the potential leg save that he could do. You can see that I'm not facing the goalie at an angle, I'm facing at him directly angle look look it's directly it's not 45 if i did a heel to heel but the heel to heel was faced at a 45 maybe i would have scored because the heel to heel is not going to really make the goalie stuck all the time right so because i'm facing at a 45 against the goalkeeper this is the wrong shot choice here so if i don't score it's my fault i have to go for a power strike here uh and then we have a situation here where this is a good good example and we're going to lead into this one as the next one um where you go for an angle where you do a skill move before you do the tap shots, okay? And we're going to be doing the skill moves uh, against the goalkeeper right after this one. But look, I get close. I do a skill move. Ball roll to keep the ball in place. I do that skill move that I use all the time. And look, when you do the skill move, goalkeeper is paused in a, in a general area, right? So he'll move a little bit, but he'll be a little bit paused, which creates that space for you, right? So he's still stuck in that area. You did that skill move to push the ball to the side with momentum. If I did just a regular left stick, I wouldn't have that momentum on the ball. So we do that skill move. We go for a tap shot because we're close to the goalkeeper and we score the opportunity. So for the next scenario, guys, this is going to be skilling against the goalkeeper. Now, again, it's going to be very difficult to show this against the skill games because the goalies don't react the same way, right? But skilling is going to be in different ways. One way is going to be the one I just showed you guys, where you create the angle to go for a tap shot right away against the goalkeeper. Another way is going to be going for uh, a heel to heel at a 45 degree angle right so you could go like this the goalie pushes off against you so this is only when the goalie is pushing off against you if you're in a situation where you are over here and the goalie pushes you you can go for a heel to heel and have the empty net to work with okay again skill games is not going to show you um there's always going to be like different ways of, of scoring these opportunities another way could be uh, going for an elastico to create that space as well. Sometimes you'll go for an elastico first time, and it'll also force an animation out of the goalkeeper too. Uh, a big one is going to be the trickster as well, because the trickster is going to be a cool way for you to score your opportunity as well. So the trickster, if you guys haven't seen the tutorial for it, be sure to check out the skill games, is going to look like this against the goalie, right? So Neymar has the ability to do it, so he's just going to do that and score the goal against the goalkeeper if he's being pushed up against, right? So I'll show you guys some examples of that right now. Okay, so let's show you guys some examples of utilizing some skill moves to get past the goalkeeper, right? Um, here's a situation here where I am waiting for attacking AI. Again, we'll talk about attacking scenarios at some point in the future when it comes down to the specific players you want in your team, all that kind of stuff. But I want you guys to notice the situation here. There's nothing going on in the attack right now, right? Nothing at all. There's literally nothing, so you have to wait. Madison creates that space in behind. I go for a through ball. Here's the thing. In this situation here, what shooting animation are you going to do? Look at this and you tell me what shooting animation you're going to do here. If you go for a power strike, you have a chance of the goalie saving this because it's kind of close to him, right? You could go for a tap shot. It could potentially work, but maybe he does a leg save even if he doesn't have the trait either. So what I do 
is I do that skill move that I just showed you guys because I'm 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 looking at two different things. One, if he does manual goalkeeping and I do this skill move, it'll give me an opportunity that potentially hit the ball across goal, right? Because it's a controlled skill move. But look at what happens. I do this skill move. The goalie kind of stops in place. I go for a tap shot to make the shot more accurate. And he does that sort of save animation to score that opportunity. And this is very important to be able to do against the goalie, especially against the really park the bus guys. Because if you don't go for this extra skill move in this situation, you might not score it. Look at how, look at all this space I have to work with just from utilizing this skill against the goalie. It's crazy. Um, so this one here is an example of what I was talking about with Ronaldinho or uh, earlier where you can do a skill move against the goalkeeper and he'll just register an animation, right? Ronaldinho is close to the goalkeeper here, right? And he's being rushed at. So because he rushes at me like that, I can force an animation out of the goalkeeper. So I go for an elastical and I could score this opportunity, right? A really cool way of being able to, to score an opportunity because the elastical's initial movement looks like a shot. So it's kind of a cool way to fake him out if he's rushing up against you. Uh, the next one here, let's see. It's always Ronaldinho because this card was absolutely nuts to work with. So look, this is a situation here where even if he doesn't force animation, you are still creating that angle against the goalkeeper. Okay, so you can see that once I get into this scenario here. So I go for it, right? He's already pushing up against me. So because I noticed the push up against me, I go for the elastical, but his card is still going to be based off of the middle. You see, it's still going to be based off of the middle. So I do that skill move to create the angle for myself. I go for a shot. I get the opportunity to score, right? So it's all about creating that one angle for you to score that opportunity, which is why I hate manual goalkeeping so much. But another situation here, this is for the trickster one, right? The trickster one, when it pops off, it's really, really nice. So you do the trickster. Again, if you guys want to watch the tutorial for how to do this, you can see the controller right now, or you can watch the skill moves uh, tutorial. Look at how the goalie is pushing up against me right he pushes up against me so i can do this animation earlier because it's going to force an animation from the goalkeeper look and then i could get i have an empty net to, to score at so it's really really cool to be able to have that play style to score some great opportunities in that way another situation here with ronaldinho where we do the same thing right so you have to time the skill move earlier because you're doing those two seconds of animations to get the goal scoring opportunity so we're close we're honestly if it wasn't four nil and i was being serious in the game over here i'm utilizing that first skill move i just showed you guys the one where it's kind of like uh he can push the ball upwards here by the ways for that skill move in particular i want to show you guys something because it's very important to mention this okay because madison was a right-footed player when you do this skill move it's always best to utilize it like this look okay so let's just retry this this skill move, strong foot on the strong side, makes the most sense. Because look, your initial movement is approaching the middle side, but you're exiting to the side, okay? So when you're doing it at the top over here, and you're right-footed, and you're doing that same exact skill move... Sorry, let me just do this again. So if I'm, if I'm at the top here, and I'm using Neymar, who's right-footed, and I'm doing this skill move, because the initial is kind of like on the inside of his foot to drag it out... Sometimes it's easier for the goalkeeper to get the ball, right? But if you are in the right-sided position, there's no situation where that happens because of the way that you're exiting the skill move, right? You're going downwards. You're pushing the ball away from the goalkeeper. So it'll force an animation from him or just create that space for you in general. So strong foot on the strong side, right, will create that space for you there, okay? So just be mindful of that. So here's an example, guys, of it working, okay? Because you could still do this. You could still do this in the opposite direction. It's just not as consistent as the strong direction, okay? So again, Thierry Henry gets into the scenario here, right? He's a right-footed player on the left-hand side. So when we do the skill move with the card here, it still works because the goalie is still based off of the middle. But if I'm too close to the goalkeeper, that's the, that's the issue here is if you're too close to him, you can't always get that animation across him. But if you do it early enough, you'll still force it out of the card, but it's still kind of based off of the middle, you see? so. It still works. I still do it from time to time. It's just not as consistent as if Henri is on the right side. If he's on the right side, it's way more consistent, okay? So if that's like Di Maria, for instance, on that left-hand side, I have no issues there in, in general. The way the goalie reacts and everything is going to be a goal. Um, and then, again, this is the scenario here where I showed you guys earlier where you do the skill move. 
to create the space and you get the tap shot opportunity. All right, guys. So the next one that we have here is going to be the shot cancel, right? So the shot cancel, uh, the way to do this is just to shoot and then to press LTRT really quickly, right? So that's L2R2 or LTRT. So again, shoot, cancel, shoot, cancel, shoot, cancel, right? So this one is really effective because it still forces an animation out of the goalkeeper and sometimes the defenders as well for you to score your opportunities, right? So the place that I like to use it the most in is when I'm attacking into the side positions over here and I don't have a pass to make. So I just do a shot cancel against the goalkeeper and score the opportunity, right? Now, again, I'm showing it in the skill games, but they don't actually force the animation from skill games. So it's not a good way to me to, for me to showcase it. But you basically do that and you get a goal scoring opportunity. So I'll show you guys the example right now. Okay, so let's show you guys some examples here, right? So this is just me doing some skill moves with Ronaldinho because he's absolutely nuts. But you're going to notice a lot of the times that when you're attacking in this space, you don't really have like the proper attacking AI to give you that extra goal scoring opportunity, or you don't really use player lock that much, which a lot of people don't, right? So in this situation here, you're going to see that I create a situation where I get the extra dribble. Now, technically speaking, could I go for a pass? Sure, I could go for a pass, but to who? You know what I'm saying? Like if I make a pass right now, it's going to be completely luck based, right? So when you get into this area here, this area here, if you go for a shot cancel and you face the side, like I do over here, right? So I shoot, shot cancel, but I aim my left stick to the right side. I create a situation for myself where I could just shoot at an empty net. Okay. Situation over here too. You're going to see that I do the same thing with Ronaldinho in the side area. Doing a couple skill moves, the giddy cancel into the middle. Again, no passing angle, right? Nothing. Shot cancel. The shot itself, the shot is already forcing the animation out of the goalkeeper. But then the cancel is what's pushing you into the side position. And all you have to do is just shoot and you score an opportunity. Okay. Next up over here, I think uh, this one is just a regular power strike. So that's not it. Sometimes my clips are a little bit messed up. Okay. Another situation here, right? So now I have Erling Holland, who's more of a physical type dude, but could still do it, right? I get into this scenario here. Sure, I could technically make the pass across goal. But again, everything is all based off of heat of the moment. Nobody's perfect. Nobody does everything perfectly, right? But in this situation here, my thought process is not even to look at this person. My thought process is to look at the goalkeeper and then go for the shot cancel, right? So I go for the shot cancel. And right away, man, I don't even, I don't even wait for the dribble to pop off because I know he's physical. I do it. And right away, I shoot, right? Once I do it, I'm already shooting the ball so that the animation is as quick as possible. So I'm already forcing the animation from the goalie. Forced, I get the angle to shoot. Empty net to score on. Okay, guys. So for the last one, it's going to be the power shot. So guys, the power shot in this year's game, way more effective than last year's game, but more, more effective if you have the playstyle plus version of it. Okay, and I'll show you guys some examples in game. But the way to utilize this power shot is to hold L1, R1, and then shoot. Be mindful that when you take this strike, the strike is manual, okay? So if I aim it completely upwards, that's where he's gonna take the strike, okay? So in order for you to hit this strike nicely, do your best to aim it on target like so, okay? Do your best, because in game, sometimes I'll do it, I'll be like, I'll, I'll, I'll aim it a certain way, well, I'll just miss the target entirely. But you could see that the animation of Mbappe doing it is not as crazy as someone who has the playstyle plus. You can see how slow it is there, right? Okay. So again, the power shot this year is definitely going to be a way to score if you haven't created a situation where you're close enough to the nets because these guys, when they take these strikes, it's absolutely insane, right? So this is just an example of in-game stuff of me using Roberto Carlos. I want you to take a look at where I'm taking these strikes from. Look at that, right? Look at how fast he does the animation when he has the playstyle plus version of the, the playstyle. It's very, very quick. So if I'm hitting a green time strike there, I could potentially score. If I'm hitting it on target properly from the manual shot, I probably score as well. But again, you have to be very mindful of the angles that you're facing to take these types of strikes. Because I get into a scenario here where you're going to notice that I get the ball, I think, over here in the bottom side. And I go for it here just for the sake of it, just to show examples of, you know, taking the strike with Brito Carlos. But you can see that I hit it way too far off to the side because look at the angle of, when, of how I'm facing the thumbstick, right? You have to do your best to just aim it more into the middle. Honestly, do, your, do yourself a favor and aim, aim it more into the middle because they take very good strikes, man. Like make sure that your thumbstick is really, really like 
middle on the right side, but then slightly, just ever so slightly upwards for that side angle, right? So it's just the animation, man. The animation is so insanely quick when they do that animation. It looks like they're Speedy Gonzalez going into it, right? Another situation here where we're outside of the 18 yard box. Outside of the 18 yard box, we get that little angle right here, and we go for the shot animation too, and we don't score, right? Um, this one is an example of a great area where you want to use a strike like this, okay? So let's say you have created all of this attacking space here down the middle of the play. You get the pass off to someone who has this trait and you go for the shot right away because the precision and power of this strike when you aim it on target, look, see, you can see this one's more based off of the middle. Look at this thing. Crazy. Though the power that comes off from a larger distance away, because if you're doing a regular power strike from here, you really have to green time for it to come off or you hit it at a 45 degree angle. But just being able to hit that, like, give me a nice little, nice little achievement at the top right corner, you know? Even here, look at this situation. Because this area, again, this is the most inconsistent area to shoot from. But when you have this trait, look at how powerful it comes off. It's crazy, okay? So that's pretty much it, guys, for the finishing. Uh, there probably, there's probably a little bit more ways of scoring, but that, that is probably the most advanced ways you're probably going to want to score your opportunities whenever given all these different... Um, opportunities in game so yeah hopefully you guys enjoy this video today i'll catch you guys for the next one peace out dudes love you guys